Welcome to Friday 15, Google's series of tips for busy small business owners. Give us 15 minutes of your time and we'll provide you with practical information that you can implement immediately to grow your business online. My name is Whitney Lemon and I'll be your host today. I'm streaming live from Des Moines, Iowa, and we are joined by Stasia Holdren from Nashville, Tennessee. Stasia is an internet marketer with 17 years experience. Stasia, so great to have you. Thank you very much, Whitney. I'm happy to be here. Today's topic is an online tool called Google Trends. We'll talk about what it is, how it can help your business, and how to use it. Let's go ahead and get started. Stasia, can you start us off by explaining what Google Trends is? Sure thing, Whitney. Google Trends is a free web-based tool from Google, and you can access it at www.google.com slash trends. And Trends is going to let you compare search popularity on different words and phrases that you choose on Google, dating all the way back to January 2004. Wow. It's going to display a graph that represents that relative popularity of the words that you choose. So you're able to actually see patterns and changes over time. Great. How much detail can you get? Well, Trends is going to let you compare up to five words and phrases, and these will be labeled search terms. With Trends, you'll see how that interest has changed over time comparing those words, but you can also look at a single term, and you can see things like how it's, the interest has varied by geographical location, and you can even compare interest on a term by different date ranges. Wow, sounds interesting. Uh, can you give us a demo? Sure. Okay, so it would probably be useful to pretend we are opening a small business. So let's imagine, what should we do, Whitney? Should we open a bakery? So, Absolutely. Yeah, mind. I want some cupcakes. <laughs> All right, so let's do some initial research. And we're going to try to see what people are looking for online, and that information will be used to help us design our menu. Okay. So let's compare some flavors to see what's popular. In our demo screen, we're going to enter the search terms that we want to compare separated by commas. So for this example, let's use red velvet cupcake, mm -hmm. lemon cupcake, Sounds good. vanilla <laughs> cupcake, and chocolate cupcake. Okay, Definitely. so those are the five flavors I can think of that I'm really wanting to eat right now. <laughs> <laughs> so these terms are separated by commas again, and we're going to click the button that's labeled Explore. All right, so now we see a results page as soon as it loads here. And now it's showing us a comparison of those terms. Now, the results we see are worldwide. Let's refine it by limiting it just to the United States. And you check the limit to and select the area there. Okay, as you can see here, as it loads, uh, Similar trends, interest is on a steady rise from 2004 and on. Now, incidentally, within each of these search terms, you can create groupings of words which have up to 25 words in each of the groups. So how do you suggest a business owner use this information? Okay, well, let's refine our view a little more. Let's look at a particular year. So let's limit to just 2012. Okay, so now we're seeing traffic patterns over a particular year last year. So based on what we're seeing here and the popularity of different flavors, and green is the chocolate cupcake, um, we see that that's our top search. And so we might start our menu with chocolate and vanilla and red velvet as our regular standard flavors. Those are our most popular searches. Now, you'll see here, if you'll see the dips and, and valleys on the graph, and those indicate periods of higher or lower interest. Now, there's a big spike on red velvet cupcake in February. And mm -hmm. so what we could do is say, all right, that's going to be our featured flavor of a month, because that's when people are searching for it. Mm -hmm. Now. In the red line on the lemon cupcake, we see that there's a, a spike in April. So maybe we decide that April is going to be the lemon cupcake flavor of the month. Another thing that, we, that might be helpful here is to actually look at what's happening in the news. So if you check that box labeled news headlines on the top right, we'll start to see letters appear at different points on the graph. And these show us representative news stories from different periods of time to help us get some insight into those trends. 
So, for example, if we click on the letter B, you'll see a headline for a Washington Post story. And it's titled, A $55,000 Sparkling Red Velvet Cupcake. <laughs> Quite a cupcake, right? Wow. <laughs> and now, so this story talks about a Philadelphia bakery that offers a special Valentine's Day cupcake. And it's topped with an eight carat engagement ring. <laughs> Yeah. I would imagine. Wow. Yeah. Well, you might, you know, for our bakery, maybe we use that idea as something to incorporate into our business, although I'll bet we'll sell more if we use smaller diamonds. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, another option that you can use there, it's a checkbox labeled forecast. Now, if Trends has enough data, it's going to show us a projection for future events. So if we could change the limit to and make that back from 2004 to present, that should give us enough data to see what's going to happen. And now we can check forecast and we'll be able to see, uh, if you check, yep, we should be able to see here what's going to happen in the future, right? So you see the dotted line on the end. So based on, tr uh, on trends, Google's telling us what we think will happen uh, in a, a future period of time.